Hi, so in the previous video we derived part of our labour supply relation in our intertemporal labour and leisure choice model and now we're going to take that a bit further to derive equilibrium in the labour market. So what we're going to start with is a representative firm which has a representative production function which is given by this relation so our output or our output supplied in period 1 is equal to a1 multiplied by some function of labor supplied in period one. Now if we remember from our solo growth model videos this a1 can be viewed as total factor productivity or just a form of productivity in the economy or the solo residual uh, and this basically just gives our level of technology in our economy and so if we increase our technology we're going to increase our output y1 so we're looking at a representative firm and this firm maximizes their profits so we can denote profits by pi and so these profits are going to be conducting a maximization problem the only thing that this firm is choosing is their labor supply that's the only input to this model we see above that output only comes from increasing our labor we don't have any capital in this model at the moment so they're maximizing profits which come from their output so we we maximize the output function um, but we do have a cost we're assuming that there's a, just some variable cost to employing more labor so we have to pay our workers w for every hour worked so this is our maximization problem we want to maximize our output minus our costs of production so how do we solve this problem? Very simple, we just take a first order condition with respect to labor supply as that's our only choice variable and so what we get out of this is that our a1 multiplied by the derivative of our function of labor minus w is equal to zero. Uh, we can rearrange this, just put add w to both sides of this first order condition and so we can write this as this our a1 multiplied by the derivative of our production function of labor is equal to w and what we notice about this function on the left hand side is that this is the marginal product of labor so marginal product of labor is our technology multiplied by the derivative of this function of labor in the production function and this is equal to the wage rate this makes sense that at optimum our labor is being paid its marginal product so that's all nice and what, what does this result tell us it tells us that the wage rate w depends on our productivity parameter a1 so our wage rate in period one is going to be a function of our productivity parameter and we can make a further assumption that we have our ratio of wages across our two periods we have a two-period model so wage one over wage two is approximately equal to the productivity parameters in these two periods intuitively this makes a bit of sense so if we increase the productivity of the whole economy that means that our workers get more, more productive, so we're willing to pay them more. If we increase productivity in both A1 and A2, then the ratio of the wages is going to stay pretty much the same because people or our workers are equally productive in both periods. Whereas if we say increase A1, which I put that initial arrow to, but we keep productivity in period two the same so we increase a1 let's draw some arrows if we increase a1 while keeping a2 the same well we're going to want to increase our w1 but keep w2 the same because productivity is increased in period one so we want to pay our workers more there's they give us a higher marginal product whereas in period two nothing's changed so we'll keep that the same so these ratios change in this way so this says that a temporary increase in productivity in period one comes with a temporary increase in wages in period one whereas a permanent increase in technology a has no effect on the 
relative wage rates in period one and two, and that makes intuitive sense. So if I scroll down to give myself a bit of space here, what we can do with this is we can now draw up our equilibrium in the labour market. Uh, I will get some lines because I'm terrible at drawing straight lines on here. But so let's draw up our axes and we can draw a graph of equilibrium in the labour market. So when we're looking at equilibrium in the labour market, we're thinking about wages on the y-axis and the total amount of labour being used in the economy. And so what we have found is that we have labour supply in, we're talking about period one on these axes, on these axes. And in the previous video, we saw that labour supply depends on uh, this, the interest rate. It also depends on the ratio of wage in period one to period two, as we also said in the previous video. And now we, and we could have some other factors that this depends on. And, but now what we've seen, or what we've derived, is we've looked at the firm's um, optimality conditions when they're profit maximizing, which we see at the top of the screen here. So we now have a labor demand function as well because the firms are the ones that are demanding labor. So we have demand for labor in period one, which for the firm depends on this productivity parameter, A1. And this, this could depend on another of other things, but I'm gonna focus on this just for now to show that our equilibrium in the labor market is given by these three factors. So we have some optimal wage and some optimal quantity of labor that is used in our labor market equilibrium. And so from this, we can actually formulate the output and our aggregate demand and supply functions, but I won't do that in this video. But what we see is if we, if we alter, say, uh, if we alter our productivity parameter A, say we increase A, we're going to increase demand for labor as we just discussed here, and we can see in this marginal product for labor equation. So if we were to increase A, we would then say shift our labor demand curve up and out, and this would give us a new equilibrium, which increases our labor supply in equilibrium. And as we know that having, employing more labor means we're gonna increase we're going to have more output in our economy. So this is how we get a sort of aggregate demand and supply relation. And this also depends on our interest rate and our ratio of wages in period one to period two. So as you can see, these three factors are going to alter our output equation through the labor market. We, our equilibrium level of labor in the economy depends on these three factors, the productivity parameter A1, the interest rate, or maybe more specifically the interest rate in period one, if we're going to differentiate interest rates across periods, which we can do, and our ratio of wage in period one to period two, which as we did say before, that actually depends on the productivity parameter A as well. So this could factor into our supply relation uh, as I've added this dot 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 here, as we, we can think about more things, but it's simpler to think about it in this way at the moment because that's what we've isolated. So this is our equilibrium labor market, uh, well, our e labor market equilibrium. So that just about wraps up this video. In the next one, we're going to look more at our goods market equilibrium, as I briefly mentioned. So check out the playlist for that. Uh, subscribe for lots of future videos and do drop a like if this was at all useful.